Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Hot Toys Black Panther, Marvel's Black Panther. Today, I'll be reviewing this figure in six categories. Accessories, articulation, design, is it essential to your collection, functionality, and price. Once all scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if this figure is a pass or a purchase. Man, does Hot Toys know how to make us wait. It's been about 18 months since this film released in February of 2018. So let's see if he is worth all the wait. So for accessories, T'Challa comes jam-packed. So let's take a look at some of those accessories. So T'Challa comes with seven hands in total. And I really like the design of the hands, especially the woven areas in between the black. I really feel that that adds a nice touch, sort of reminds me of carbon fiber and it just works its way all the way through. So the nail areas aren't painted in a high gloss metallic and I really don't like that. I feel like these should mimic blades and being that it's so dull, really no glitter to it, it doesn't look that way to me. So moving on to another accessory, we'll focus on the short spare. And I guess I have to accept that the days of Hot Toys making die cast weapons are over. So this area is painted primarily in two colors, dark gray and a bronze. It appears to be coming out on camera closer to gold. And the spare itself is done in the silver. And you have this string left behind, which is sadly rubber. I would have really appreciated if this was actually fabric and if the feather was a real feather. So we get a pair of interchangeable eyes, which I'll show a little bit later during the functionality part. We receive a tool to help you either insert or remove the eyes. And we received two heads. So let's start with the Black Panther head first. And I'm not crazy about all of the added sculpting. It's cool. But I don't know. It's, it's just something about it to me that just comes off as too much. And it looks more like a motorbike helmet, especially when I cover the airs. So I don't know, it's something about the helmet that I'm not particularly crazy about. I do like the eyes, however. And I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the pushback airs. So now let's take a look at the Chadwick Boseman head scope. And immediately to me, it's off. Of course, I can see him in this head scope, but it's not the one of the better ones that Hot Toys has done. I even feel that the likeness of the hair is captured poorly. And I don't like how the eyes are focused. It's not looking exactly straight away, sort of up on an angle. So I'm not sure what, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not sure about this head sculpt here. In addition, he comes with a stand as well as base. He comes with two, I guess at the moment we will call them lighting features. And he comes with a backdrop, which is listed here. Slide everything over just to show it. Here's a better view of the backdrop. And last but not least, he comes with a cable, which I'm sure is to charge the lighting uh, piece. So for accessories, I'm going to give Black Panther a 10 out of 10. So for articulation, the head is able to look up that far, which is very good. Is able to look down only that much. So the head is able to rotate a full 360 if you choose to, and you get a decent amount of pivot. So now moving on to the arms, the arms are able to go up about that much, which in my opinion is pretty good. 
you're able to rotate the arms about this much forward before the fare of the costume starting to tear. You're able to move it about that much backwards again for the same fare. So it doesn't appear that there's a butterfly joint. There is an upper bicep cut that you're able to turn about that much. Coming down to the hands, they do rotate. The elbows are, is that single? Double jointed, bending in about that much, which is a bit limiting for Black Panther. And the wrists hinge up and down. And if you rotate it to the right angle, then side to side. So now moving on to the torso, there's a floating and a lower piece. So just using the upper part of the torso, you're able to get Black Panther. Nope. Barely any movement moving back. About the same forward. Using both in conjunction, he's able to crunch about that much, which is good. Forward about that much. You do get a very limited amount of rotation due to the fabric that's used. The legs are able to stretch about that far. Kick forward about that much, which is very disappointing. Back that much. Do have upper rotation. Knees are double jointed, bending in about that much. You do have rotation at the foot. It's able to lift up about that much. Go all the way down, which is phenomenal. Get a decent amount of pivot on the inside. Less for the outside. And you receive toe articulation up, but not down. So for articulation, you have some things that work pretty good. Overall, every area of this figure has some limitation, and I'm gonna say it's mostly due to the costume that's being used. However, I'm not gonna count that as an excuse. There are certain characters that need to be more flexible than others. And in my opinion, Black Panther is one of those characters that needs to be very flexible. So for overall articulation, I'm going to give the Black Panther a generous 7 out of 10. So for design, it's been a while since I've seen the Black Panther movie, so I had to go back to see exactly how the suit looked. And one thing that I found out is that the internet is not always accurate. So I was pulling up different images of Black Panther, this one, as well as this one. I'm not 100% sure if he wore two different suits in the movie. However, I went back to the promotional poster image and that's what I'm going to base the design off of. So looking at that, Hot Toys did a good job with the suit. There's a lot of patterns, some texturizing throughout, and you have certain areas to where there are silver bits. And that just continues its way all the way throughout. One thing that I just noticed is that the hands are a different color than the suit. Usually we see that on cheaper figures such as Marvel Legends sometimes. And the necklace, it looks cool. I would have preferred if it was ingrained in the suit. That is not a strike against Hot Toys. This is how the suit was simply designed. And moving on to the mask, I really don't care for it. Looking at it from the side, it reminds me of a motorcycle helmet. It feels very big for the neck itself. Yeah, I just feel like it's too much that's going on. There's a lot of sculpting, but I don't feel that 
it was necessary. I actually like the Black Panther from Civil War design a bit better than this. But again, this is not on Hot Toys. And looking at the head scope of Chadwick Boseman, the likeness is there. But it is not completely accurate. There is clearly something off. And I really think that it falls apart a little bit, maybe at the lips. So this is certainly not one of Hot Toys' better head sculpts. And one last thing to point out, one thing that I've always liked about Hot Toys is the stitch work. And the stitch work is very clean. Kind of wish Mezco could follow suit. So for overall design, I'm gonna give Black Panther an eight out of 10. So is Black Panther sent you to your collection? Of course he is if you're building your Avengers collection or if you wanna add some diversity to your collection. Now the question to ask, is this Black Panther the version that you should have? And I'll have to answer with, I am not so sure. Hot Toys has released a previous Black Panther, actually two, one being King T'Challa from the same movie, the other being the version from Captain America Civil War. And I actually passed on that version assuming that Black Panther would get his own movie. And when he got his own movie, we would get the Chad Bozeman head sculpt, which we actually did. But that I miss out on having a better figure. So as far as being essential to your collection, I'm going to give this Black Panther a seven out of 10. So for functionality, we actually have a lot to cover. So let's start with the head itself. So as I remove this head, you see this strange looking device, which inserts via this square up into this open peg, which has the same shape. So starting with this head here, you're able to remove the eyes. And I'm very happy that Hot Toys has provided a tool to do so. So you'll simply take this tool You'll insert it into this area here, which it will hook on like so. And then you'll simply pull it out and then down and it removes the eyes. So adding the different eyes that come with it, I'm going to place it back on this hook. Give you an idea of how it looks without. And I'm going to place it in like so. And once in, I'm just gonna move forward. And you have the eyes piercing through, which in my opinion looks very good. So stepping away from this head, you'll see that this piece is still on. In order to remove it, the easiest way I find is to reattach the head again. And that's how he looks with the eyes. Squeeze the head on the side. And as you pull up, it removes that square, leaving the peg behind, to which now you can put on the unmasked head sculpt. And here's how he looks with the unmasked head scope on. And just to show you the range of movement with this, he's still able to look way up. However, you can see some areas that's being exposed and he's barely able to look down. And you get the same side to side and probably a less, less pivot. So moving down, I wanna focus on the hands next. And for me, this has been an ongoing problem with Hot Toys. But before we get to that problem, I want to address something else. Well, and that's kind of it. The hand just fell off by itself. Now, aside from that, I want you to notice that the fabric comes all the way up, nearly covering the peg. So now when you put a hand wrong hand 
So now when you go to put a hand on this very short peg, you have to squish. And I'm not sure if you can see the fabric turning. This is going to tear in a short amount of time. My advice would be whatever hands you like the best, keep them on this figure and leave them so. I just don't understand why Hot Toys do not include the pegs in the hand so that you simply can prop off. The hands will fall off less easy and you will you wouldn't risk damaging the fabric so much. So sticking with the hands, the majority of hands that come with this figure are expression hands. The one hand that we do have that fit the accessory is shaped like so. And I'm pretty sure, looking at it, it should fit it rather securely. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to bend the thumb back a little bit. And as I bend the thumb back, I'm just going to work on squeezing it between the four fingers. And there we go. And it holds it very secure and snug. So that's a good thing. And I really don't want to do this. But here we go. Actually, I'm going to try to move the fabric back. And put the peg on like so. That is definitely the best way of doing it. And here he is standing with the short and spare. So another thing to be concerned with is the suit itself. So let's focus on the arm for a, mom a moment. And you see as I turn, not only does it stretches and bend up in areas here and here and there as well. So you have to be very careful with the posing of this figure. Rather than having the arm tight on the body, my advice would be to move it out some and then use it to twist. And as that fabric starts to break up and crease, simply use your thumb and gently pull it back down each time that you move it. And it's the same thing, especially on the torso. When you're turning, you just get a lot of stretch in these areas and you see the fabric building. And what I would do is just gently pull it down. So moving to the bottom of this figure, I'm unsure of why they gave us toe articulation, which goes up. However, not toe articulation, which goes down. In my opinion, when using this figure, especially posing him, it would be more beneficial to have the toe facing downward. However, you're not left with that option. Now, aside from the toe articulation, he stands very easily on his own, even on what I have him standing on, which is not the best. Well, he tipped over. It is not due to his instability. It is due to the soft material that I have underneath him. So moving away from the figure, I want to move on to some of the accessories that he comes with. So we receive these two pieces, which actually connect to the base via these ports. Well, it actually gives you a few options to pose it, which I think is pretty cool. And if you look in the back, There's a port for your power source, and then there appears to be an on and off. All right, so I almost forgot to show this piece, which is meant to prop the accessories on. And this piece will then fit in like so as the wire attaches inside here. So I'm gonna actually do that off camera well, maybe I don't have to. Let me just see if I can readjust this properly. So it was going to be easier for me to just run. <laughs> I'm going to have to do this on camera. Simply, I'm just going to run this line in here, which it will come out this side. I'll do the same with this side and simply insert them to the middle.
So here it is all assembled. The part that sucks, Hot Toys provides you with the cable, but not an adapter to actually plug in. So you have to have your own adapter or you can choose to insert batteries. Being that I have some cell phones laying around, I'm just gonna use the adapter from one of those cell phones. Okay, so the power cable is plugged in. Let's hit the on switch. And that looks good. Let's turn the lights down some. So it's cool how the black light sort of bounces off of the suit, giving the effect in the movie. If you look along the legs, you should see it pretty clearly. So that's pretty clever by Hot Toys. So for functionality, there are clearly some issues. The first being the material that's used without a question. This will damage over time, especially around the wrist areas. The other glaring issue for functionality for me is that you have to use a cheap gimmick in order to mimic what we saw in the movie instead of having a light up feature built in the actual suit. So for overall functionality, I'm giving the Black Panther a 6 out of 10. So for pricing, Black Panther comes in at approximately $259. Add in $20 bucks for shipping, you're looking at a price point of $280. I was able to pick mines up at my local comic shop for around $255, so I was able to save some money. So shout out to Near Guard Toys, located in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you for this pickup. So now... Is Black Panther worth the price of admission? So let's take a look at what he comes with. First of all, we get two head sculpts. And for any Hot Toys collector, we know that that's not always the case. So I'm very happy to have a figure that has a mass version and an unmasked version. In addition, we get a bundle of accessories. We get the cool light up feature that you see before you, as well as a few hands, which I'm very surprised that Hot Toys didn't include more hands. And from what I can remember, we do receive a lot of the accessories in the movie. Having the shill would have been great. However, I didn't deduct points from that being missing. So in closing, in the realm of six inch excuse me 12 inch action figures the price point is typically around 225 so i don't think the 35 dollar increase for what we are receiving is beyond action price so for pricing i'm going to give the black panther a nine out of ten that should give black panther an overall cliff score of 46 out of 60. so now is he a pass or a purchase this is a bit of a difficult one for me. As I explained earlier, I pass on the first version that was released by Hot Toys in anticipation of this one. And as far as aesthetics are just looking at this, I feel the first version looked better. We already know that there will be a Black Panther 2, so we should have another suit so if you miss out on this one, you will have the availability to buy another. So I'm going to say that this is a, a purchase. Even though this is not his first look in the MCU, it is the look from his first solo movie. So here's Black Panther by itself. Here's Black Panther next to the Iron Spider, as I did not want to search for my Spider-Man suit. The advanced suit, that is. And here he is next to his other Avengers ally, Thor. So both Thor and Iron Spider-Man I have already reviewed. 
please feel free to check out any of those videos. So I want to thank you for taking the time to stick around on a very long review. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop, and I hope to see you during the next review. So for pricing, Black Panther comes in at approximately $259. Add in $20 bucks for shipping, you're looking at a price point of $280. I was able to pick mines up at my local comic shop for around $255, so I was able to save some money. So shout out to Nearguard Toys, located in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you for this pickup. So now, is Black Panther worth the price of admission? So let's take a look at what he comes with. First of all, we get two head sculpts. And for any Hot Toys collector, we know that that's not always the case. So I'm very happy to have a figure that has a mass version and an unmasked version. In addition, we get a bundle of accessories. We get the cool light up feature that you see before you, as well as a few hands, which I'm very surprised that Hot Toys didn't include more hands. And from what I can remember, we do receive a lot of the accessories in the movie. Having the shield would have been great. However, I didn't deduct points from that being missing. So in closing, in the realm of six inch, excuse me, 12 inch action figures, the price point is typically around $225, so I don't think the $35 increase for what we are receiving is beyond accent price. So for pricing, I'm going to give the Black Panther a 9 out of 10. That should give Black Panther an overall cliff score of 46 out of, out of 60. So now, is he a pass or a purchase? This is a bit of a difficult one for me. As I explained earlier, I passed on the first version that was released by Hot Toys in anticipation of this one. And as far as aesthetics are just looking at this, I feel the first version looked better. We already know that there will be a Black Panther 2, so we should have another suit. So if you miss out on this one, you will have the availability to buy another so I'm going to say that this is a, a purchase. Even though this is not his first look in the MCU, it is the look from his first solo movie. So here's Black Panther by itself. Here's Black Panther next to the Iron Spider as I did not want to search for my Spider-Man suit. The advanced suit that is. And here he is next to his other Avengers ally, Thor. So both Thor and Iron Spider-Man I have already reviewed. Please feel free to check out any of those videos. So I want to thank you for taking the time to stick around on a very long review. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop, and I hope to see you during the next review.